Konnichiwa and arigato gozaimasu. Hello, welcome, and thank you so much for joining this presentation all about the incredible destination that is Japan. My name is David Craven. I'm one of the key account managers here at Princess Cruises, and it is my utmost pleasure to unveil and explore this incredible destination with you today. Now, I'm very, very lucky and have only just recently returned back from Japan. And if I'm honest, I still haven't come down from that trip. This place is out of this world and is a must for anyone who loves to travel. Now, doesn't matter what type of traveler you are, if you're a foodie, if you're a history buff, if you love nature, Japan has something for everyone. It truly does. It is jam-packed with incredible wildlife, beautiful scenery, incredible beaches. The food is second to none. It truly is. Uh, it's got amazing history, beautiful temples, and then it's also hyper-futuristic in their major city. So it genuinely does have something for everyone. It really is an incredible destination. On top of that, it is extremely safe for travelers. It is probably the cleanest place I've ever been to in my entire life. You can eat off the floor. It is so, so clean. And the people are just so accommodating. They cannot do enough. They're so kind. They're so welcoming. Uh, it's just a truly, truly magical place to be. Now, our cruising season is pretty much year round. We're nearly there year round, but not quite, because obviously when we get into November, December, January and early February, it does get very, very cold uh, and we kind of want to avoid those cooler temperatures. So typically we're talking about March all the way through to October. And depending on when you are cruising, you will get a different weather and a different experience. If you're there in March and April, then, of course, you are going to be there for the iconic spring flowers. Now, it's not just the cherry blossom. We've got plum blossom. Literally, the entire country blooms. It's a bit of a phenomenon, and the entire country celebrates this as well. So it's a wonderful time to be there. Bear in mind, it is going to be peak season, uh, so expect those peak prices. If you're sailing around May, June, the weather is going to be sublime, not too humid, but literally nice and sunny. Uh, and you can also celebrate Golden Week. That's going to be in the month of May. Once we get into July and August, that's the height of their summer. So it is a little bit more humid at this time. But if you're cruising there in August, then you will be able to uh, be there to celebrate the Nakamano Firework Festival and Abuta Firework Festival, uh, which is truly an amazing experience. So that's when the entire nation celebrates so many parts of their history and culture. And if you do want to be there for those firework festivals, make sure you're choosing an itinerary that is heading to the northern part of Honshu uh, to a port of call called Aomori. There is more on that later. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but that is the port of call that you want to be to celebrate that amazing time of year. Now, cruising this region, we've got you covered. So many people say, I want to go to Japan. They'll plan to fly into Tokyo, spend a few days there. Then they get the uh, bullet train over to Kyoto. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. And they go, cool, I've seen Japan. There is so much to Japan. It's an island nation and it's formed of over 14,000 islands. So what better way to see an island nation than by the ocean? You're going to get to go to the very top to the very bottom in comfort. There are so many ports of call. We are visiting well over 30 ports of call throughout Japan, as well as um, offering six unique ports of call with Princess. Uh, and we've got more than 35 departures. We will offer something uh, to make sure that we will uh, give you access to Honshu, to Kyushu, to get down to Okinawa, as well as visiting some international destinations in Taiwan, as well as South Korea. Now, the value of cruising in this region is unparalleled. Now, it can get a little bit pricey when we're looking at things like hotels, when we're looking at transport on the ground, things like that. Remember, when you're cruising, it's all about that unpack once. It's so, so easy. Come on board the ship, unpack your things, and let us take you to these destinations in comfort. So when we're looking at rough pricing, on average, we're looking at just shy of $300 a day for an interior. And that's, of course, your accommodation, your meals, your transportation, your entertainment with access to spa treatments, 
to so much, uh, and it's just so easy. So you can get to the very top of Honshu, head down to Kyushu, down to Nagasaki, heading over to South Korea. It is so much better cruising, and it's so good in terms of value for money. So cruising this region is kind of unparalleled. Now, when we are cruising this region, we're going to be cruising on board our beautiful Diamond Princess. Now, she, if I'm honest, is a destination all to herself. Now, she is very, very familiar with this region because she was actually built in Japan. She has Mitsubishi engines, she, so she knows Japan like the back of her keel. Uh, now, there are some unique features on board this ship uh, that you can only experience on the Diamond Princess including things like an Itsumi bathhouse. We have the largest Itsumi bath uh, at sea in the world. Okay, so we're going to offer so many unique experiences to make sure that you're getting that authentic, immersive experience in this destination. And the Diamond Princess is a great way to do it. You will come back rejuvenated. How many times have you heard people come back from a holiday and you say, how was it? And they go, it was amazing, but we just did too much and I'm shattered. I think I need a holiday for my holiday. You won't feel like that on board the beautiful Diamond Princess because there are plenty of opportunities to make sure that you will be rejuvenated and relaxed. Like I said, we've got the world's largest Itsumi bath, and that's the hydrotherapy pool that you can see in the top left-hand side there. There are also indoor pools as well as saunas and jacuzzis. We've got the conservatory, which is an indoor pool area. So if we've got a little bit of inclement weather outside, but you still want to go for a swim, don't worry about it. We've got that enclosed area to make sure you can go for a swim, sit in the jacuzzi with a cocktail and still treat yourself. Of course, all of our ships feature the luxury bed, guaranteeing the best night's sleep you've ever had. And of course, if you want to genuinely treat yourself to a treatment, to a massage, to a, a stone massage, to a Swedish massage, depending on what type of treatment you want, the beautiful Lotus Spa will have something for you to make sure you are relaxed. Now, like I said, we are going to make sure that you are immersed in this destination. So when you're cruising on board the Diamond Princess in Japan, we have roughly about 70% Japanese on board and about 30% Westerners or international guests. So there is something for everyone. So as an example of this, we have a Japanese speaking cruise staff as well as an English speaking cruise staff. Um, you are going to get these traditional experiences so you can learn to play the Japanese drums. We'll even teach you how to speak a little bit of Japanese. The food is obviously going to be locally sourced and locally inspired. So you are genuinely going to feel like you are fully immersed in this beautiful, beautiful destination. Now, we have Broadway style shows. So if you are a theatre lover, we will have something for you. We've got amazing offerings for the young ones in our kids and teens club. Now, with that youth center, it's broken down into three age groups, age three to seven, eight to 12 and 13 to 17. Quite often we see guests come on board. The kids go to the youth center and the parents don't see them till the end of the cruise because they're having the time of their lives. It's a really fun and engaging area. And the children love, uh, love this area and our youth center are just superb. One of the amazing offerings that they do is if mum and dad want to do potentially a shore excursion, which is to a sake distillery, not really ideal for the children. The children don't want to go for obvious reasons. The great thing is you can leave the children with our youth team uh, and we'll entertain them throughout the day, leaving mum and dad to go and explore and enjoy that sake tasting. So they're super accommodating. The best way to think of Princess is we are family friendly. We're just not family focused. It's not our target demographic. Our target demographic are people looking for that immersive experience. Now, I did mention earlier talking about that Itsumi bath. You can see two of those uh, indoor baths um, in the bathhouse there. We've actually got two more on the other side of that glass screen that you can see there. So you have four of these uh, and they are split between men and women. So the traditional way to um, go into a, an Itsumi bathhouse is fully naked. OK. Seems a little bit different from what we're used to, um, I suppose, here in Australia and New Zealand. But this is a very traditional um, experience in Japan. So as you come into the Itsumi baths, you derobe. There's um, there's a 
a, a bathrobe in there for you, the slippers, you can actually shave, there's things to shave and things like that for the men. Uh, and then what is expected is you then go around and then you shower. So you really shower. It's not just a quick in and out to cool yourself off. What is expected is to fully, fully clean yourself. And sometimes the Japanese will do this for about 45 minutes to make sure that they are as clean as physically possible. And then they enter into these baths, a beautiful area to just relax and just kind of detoxify all the stress and strains away. Now, if you are like me, a little bit more... Uh, I don't know. I suppose it's the English in me. I felt a bit weird being um, naked, so I kept my bathing suit on. I, I kept my swim trunks on. There was plenty of other uh, Japanese travelers. They didn't find it weird, uh, so it's absolutely fine. But the traditional way is to do this naked, just as an FYI, so hopefully you don't get startled. Now, of course, on all our ships, we've got the movies under the stars, which is a great area to sit outside, grab some popcorn, watch a great film. And we'll also have some locally inspired music as well as shows up there. And of course, being princess, expect that medallion technology providing the effortless cruise holiday experience. The medallion, if you're unsure, is this little thing here that I'm wearing around my neck. This is the lanyard that it comes with. And this is the actual medallion that I had on board the Diamond Princess. Now, this medallion has replaced the cruise card and this is your everything. So getting on and off the ship. What is fantastic about this? It offers true connectivity, touchless experiences, and it has heightened the service experience on board. So as you approach your cabin door, because you've got the medallion on you, as you approach the door, it will simply unlock for you. Awesome. So if you're coming back because you've got lots of gifts or souvenirs or maybe even drink and food coming back to your stateroom, it just means it's helpful as coming back in. Things like the mustard drill. Anybody who's cruised before, the first thing that you do on the day of embarkation is you have to go to the mustard drill. It can take an hour. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. It's a bit of a slow drag to the holiday. We want to get, get on board and enjoy our cruise, don't we? Now, we've completely changed the way we do mustard drill. What we do, you come on board, head to your stateroom, the door unlocks. As you're in your stateroom, you watch a video on your uh, TV screen there in your stateroom. It's six minutes, 25 seconds. Alternatively, you can watch it on your phone. Uh, and then all we do is ask you to go to your muster station just so you know where you need to go in the highly unlikely event of an emergency. So it's all about getting our guests on, enjoying their cruise as quickly as possible. You want food, order it through the app we'll bring it to you. You want a drink? Order it. We'll bring it to you. You want to go and buy something? You don't need to be finding your card or anything. Just literally tap your medallion and it's all there for you. Now, the best thing about the medallion and what I always try and say is don't think about it as all this technology and all the rest of it. Think about it as a tool to provide our crew to deliver the best service. So a good example of this, anybody who's cruised will know that um, your cabin steward will knock on your door to see if you're in your cabin uh, because they want to clean it for you and make sure it's ready for potentially the evening or in the morning. That doesn't happen anymore. The reason is the medallion uh, also has like a little location in it. So you can see where your fellow travel guests are located throughout the ship, making sure that you're connected better. But again, the great thing about this is you get up in the morning, you shower, you change, you brush your teeth, whatever it is, you go to breakfast, your cabin steward can see that you vacated your room. So they'll come in and they'll clean your room while you're not there. So you come back and all, all of a sudden your cabin's always perfect. It's always immaculate. And that's the great thing about the medallion. It's all about service. And it's not service that you see, it's service that you feel. It's an amazing experience. And anybody who's cruised on board Princess with the medallion loves it. And it is pretty much one of the biggest selling tools that we have. It is a game changer in the industry. Now, of course, when we're cruising, one of the most important things is food. We do not want you going hungry on board any of our ships. And I can guarantee you right now, you will not go hungry on the Diamond Princess. We have plenty of included options, as well as casual slash pop-up venues and specialty dining. So as we get into these, let's have a look at some of these. We've got the Sabatini's Trattoria, the Italian uh, cuisine offerings as well as we have the um, 
Sterling Steakhouse, which offers a churrasco or Brazilian uh, barbecue experience, which is amazing, located upstairs in the Horizon Court. So we cordon off an area and then offer this churrasco, Brazilian barbecue. It's fantastic. Now, Sabatini Trattoria is only open in the evenings for dinner. So that is the venue for Alfredo's Pizzeria. So if you're wanting those beautiful wood-fired style oven pizzas, uh, delicious pastas and salads, things like that, then that's the location for that. But of course, we're in Japan. We want some sushi, don't we? Only on board the Diamond Princess do we have Kai Sushi an amazing uh, venue for those who love their seafood. You can eat a la carte, so individual items, if you just want a few pieces of sushi, or you can try uh, a more traditional style of dining, so kind of entree main dessert kind of offerings as well. Something that I really, really, um, really enjoy, I think it's such a wonderful experience, are our balcony dining options. Now, if you're not too sure about what these are, we can have an ultimate balcony breakfast or ultimate balcony dinner. What happens is our, our team on board will come to your stateroom, they'll prepare your table outside on your balcony and you can enjoy a delicious breakfast as we're coming into port. What a great way to enter a port of call or alternatively have a beautiful private dining evening from the comfort of your own balcony and your stateroom. A really, really nice treat uh, and something that our guests really do enjoy as well. Now, to make the most of these kind of inclusions, we have our outstanding offerings from Princess Plus and Princess Premier. Now, this is by far the best value in the industry, without a shadow of a doubt. Now, quite often people say, oh, $65 a day just for a drinks package. Hang on. It's not just a drinks package. There is so much more to Princess Plus than just the drinks. You've got your Wi-Fi. You've got your premium desserts. You've got your fitness classes, which you'll probably need after cruising, because if you're like me, you gorge. I gorge. I'm on holiday. I'm going to enjoy the food on board, and I definitely add on a few kilos, so those classes definitely come in handy. But it also includes the activation for Ocean Now Delivery, as well as room service. Plus, on top of that, you're also going to get the Plus beverage package, which has 15 alcoholic beverages to the value of $22, 15 alcoholic beverages a day, unlimited barista style coffees, teas, things like that, and soft drinks, bottled water. So for $65 a day, that is incredible value. Now, when we're looking at Princess Premier, the value gets even heightened. So for $95 a day, we're going to have more devices for your Wi-Fi. You're going to have a higher value in terms of alcohol cost, for your premier beverage. Now, this is up to $30. Now, people will often say to me, hey, is $22 not enough then for the plus beverage? This will include the vast majority of everything that you need. If you are somebody who likes those more premium style wines or those more top shelf style spirits, this is where the premier is going to be more beneficial to you. We're going to have unlimited visitors unlimited fitness classes. We're going to have unlimited casual dining. And as a kicker, we're going to have two included specialty dining cover charges included in the premiere package, as well as the reserved theatre seating, which is genuinely, I think when I speak to most people, that is like top of the list. You have your own privately reserved area located in a prime location in the theatre for our production shows. Um, and that is available to you up until about 10 minutes before the show starts. So then you can, you know, enjoy a cocktail and crooners or whatever it is, come down to the show about 10 minutes beforehand and you have a seat there reserved for you. So it is a really, really great experience. Now you can see we're talking about casual dining options as well as specialty dining cover options. Let's talk about the Diamond Princess and what they are on board this ship. Now, our casual dining options are Alfredo's Pizzeria, as well as Kai Sushi. The specialty dining is the Sabatini Italian Trattoria, as well as the Churrascaria Brazilian Grill. So if you are on the premier package, you will get two specialty dining cover charges, which means you can enjoy each of the specialty dining options on this ship. Unlimited casual dining, but if you don't want Princess Plus or Princess Premier, if it doesn't really kind of resonate with you, you're not a massive fitness person, you don't want these inclusions, 
that's fine. Just book the princess standard. You are not going to go hungry. There are still plenty of dining options included in your regular cruise fare. So there is so much on offer for all our guests, regardless of which food, uh, sorry, which package they are looking to get or not get. Now, plenty of options on board the Diamond Princess in terms of accommodation, everything from interior, ocean view, balcony, mini suites. We've got the reserve mini suites as well as our suite offerings, which are our most premium staterooms. Also on the Diamond Princess, we have an S8 category suite. Now, the S8 category is technically three staterooms which configure to create a bespoke family suite. So if you have clients, um, a big family or maybe, you know, multi-generational traveling and they would like to all stay together, then that S8 suite is going to be the one for them. Two bedrooms, two bathrooms and can accommodate up to eight passengers. So this is a really great option for those multi-generational or large families wanting to travel together. Great value for money. But please bear in mind, there are only two of these on board the ship and our reservations team are the only ones that can reserve this for you. You cannot reserve this through Polar Online. So you will need to give us a call or utilize good old Ask Isaac, which is a fave there. So this is just highlighting some of the stateroom offerings. Like I said, we've got everything from interior all the way up to our most premium offerings, which are the suite. Now, of course, we have an amazing offering of shore excursions to make sure you're getting the most out of this region. Now, in some destinations, shore excursions aren't necessarily something that people say, look, I, I need shore excursions in all these destinations. New Zealand's one of those. We have a lot of Australians. They've been to New Zealand maybe a couple of times before. They love it. They want to go back. They know their way around and they're quite comfortable to kind of visit the destinations that they want to see. Japan is somewhere that I strongly recommend that you get uh, a shore excursion included. The reason for this, some of the ports of call are actually quite far away from the main kind of attraction. OK, so Aburutsu is one of those destination. Port of call is Miyazaki. Um, it's about a half an hour drive from the temples, from the castles, from the things that you want to go and see. Uh, and it's quite tricky to get there without a shore excursion. That's one reason. Secondly, you're going to have an English speaking guide. So um, although they are the most friendly, most wonderful, accommodating people, English isn't massively spoken throughout Japan. So having that English speaking guide is going to be a real great help for you. Number three, the safe, the safety and the guaranteed return ship that having a princess shore excursion offers. Now, if you're away on a shore excursion, you're exploring wherever it is, and unfortunately the coach breaks down, if you're on a princess shore excursion, we know what's happened. And because we know what's happened, we'll wait for you. We'll guarantee to get you back to the ship, okay? If you're doing your own thing, we don't know what's happened. You just may have lost track of time. The ship isn't going to wait for you if you're on independent travel arrangements. So just having that guaranteed return to the ship is a huge um, kind of comfort to know uh, that you're going to make it back to the ship punctually on time and you're not going to be missing um, the end, you know, the ship leaving. And as somebody who used to work on board for a number of years, um, it is not uncommon for people to miss that ship. And then they are constantly having to pay out their own pocket to kind of catch up to the ship. And it's it's not fun. You're on holiday. We want to make sure you're coming back to the ship on time. Now, when I say that, some people say, well, I bet, you know, the shore excursions are going to be more expensive and all the rest of it. We are very, very confident in the price of our shore excursions. So we have our shore excursion uh, best price guarantee. If you can find the same shore excursion online or import the same shore excursion for a cheaper price, we will refund the difference back to your onboard po portfolio as an onboard credit and still make sure that you're booked on the Princess Shore excursion so you are protected by that guaranteed return. So we're really, really confident that our pricing is very, very fair and of course, great value for money. Now, some of the short excursions will be targeting things like temples. Some of them will be targeting Japanese gardens, maybe a tea ceremony. Maybe you want to go explore a beach. There are so many different short excursions tailored to what it is you're after. OK, now somebody who's been to Japan, some things that I definitely recommend. One thing 
is a sake tasting, regardless or or not whether you're a, a drinker or whether you like sake or not. The experience of doing a sake distillery tour was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. The sake distillery that we went to was at the foot of Mount Fuji. We had a clear view of the mountain, which was just incredible. And the sake distillery had been in this family for 350 years. He was the ninth generation of sake makers. And the sake, I've never tasted sake like that before. The water, he gave us all bottles of water, which is distilled through Mount Fuji. It is the most incredible water I've ever had in my life. Then after that, we then went and had a food pairing as well as sake pairing in the most incredible restaurant I've ever seen, overlooking Mount Fuji. It was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had in travel. So doing things which kind of lean into that heritage, lean into the, the, the tradition of Japan, sake, uh, tea ceremonies, all these things, I definitely strongly recommend. But we have something for everyone in this region, and I guarantee you'll find something that you will definitely resonate with you. So let's have a look at some of the cruises that we offer in this wonderful region. There she is looking glorious, the Diamond Princess. Uh, that is in the port of Yokohama. So when we're talking about cruising in this region, the port that we um, leave from and return to is Yokohama, which is the gateway through to Tokyo. Now, getting the train from Tokyo to Yokohama is very easy. It's very, very price, fair, it's not expensive. One thing I'd say about Yokohama is I'd recommend spending a night or two there. Yokohama is the second biggest city in Japan after Tokyo. I was blown away with how awesome it is. It is an, uh, a very affluent, um, very hip, very up and coming destination where a lot of the younger Japanese are heading. It is so, so cool. So I strongly recommend that you spend at least one night in Yokohama before coming on board the ship. Secondly, another thing I'd recommend is flying into Haneda rather than Narita. Narita is a good hour and a quarter away from Tokyo and a little bit more from uh, Yokohama. Haneda is far closer to get into Tokyo itself uh, as well as getting into Yokohama. So I definitely recommend flying into and flying out of Haneda. So just a couple of options here that have been highlighted. The one on the left, you can see here, is doing a full tour of the island of Honshu, also nipping in to uh, Kyushu, to the port of Nagasaki. Uh, on the recent cruise that I did, we also went into Nagasaki. It is a very somber, um, very emotional port of call, um, but it is um, definitely, I definitely recommend it for people to, to kind of have a better understanding of what happened there and the uh, the, the effects of what happened after World War II. Now, you will notice with our itineraries, we always nip into an international port of call. You can see here Busan has been highlighted in South Korea. The reason for that is uh, Japan has a ruling where any ship that's not flagged in Japan must visit an international port um, if it's cruising in their water. So we will always include an international port. Now, the one on the left-hand side is one of the shorter cruises. Uh, now, this full circle you can do in June, July, as well as August. And you can see there the port of Aomori at the very top of the island of Honshu. Aomori is the port of call that you want to go to to see the Kamano firework festivals and the Buta firework festivals that happen in August. Now, because you're there for the firework festivals, we're not going to be leaving our Mori till 11 o'clock at night to make sure that you can see the festival. You can see these giant lanterns of samurais and all these different kind of floats. It's amazing to see. Um, so this is a late port of call to make sure you can actually experience this destination. Now, if you want to spend a little bit longer in Japan, you can do anywhere between 9 and 15 nights. So you can book these cruises as, say, like an eight-night cruise or a nine-night cruise. Those back-to-back -back cruises can actually be booked as one whole cruise. So for that example would be a 17-night cruise.
Now, just highlighting the one on the right hand side, this is going to be traveling around March and April for the um, exploring of the spring flowers, which happens further south on the islands of Shikoku, Kyushu, as well as um, on board uh, the island of Honshu as well. So you can see uh, it's really, really highlighted quite beautifully in this map here. You are exploring so much of Japan. And could you imagine trying to do that? If you're flying or on a coach or on a train, packing and unpacking, it would be a nightmare. Whereas doing it via a cruise, come on board, unpack once, and you're just going to get to see all of these incredible destinations. A few of the big highlights there, you can see there Shimitsu. Shimitsu is the gateway through to see Mount Fuji. We've got Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And Hand on Heart, one of my favorite places in this region. I know it's not Japan, it's South Korea, but Busan. Busan is awesome. South Korea is an amazing destination. Very similar to Japan in that the people are super friendly, super warm. It is so clean. It is absolutely immaculate. And the food is out of this world. If you're a seafood lover, Busan is home to the largest seafood market in Asia and one of the three largest fish markets in the world. So you can literally go to this fish market, get whatever type of seafood you like, whether it be a lobster, some oysters, a fish, doesn't matter, some eels, God knows what you want. Grab, uh, purchase it right there. Then you go to the second level and they'll actually prepare it for you. Doesn't get any fresher, doesn't get any tastier. It's an amazing destination. Now, if you've got more than two weeks um, in terms of, spending time on uh, on your cruise we do offer up to 22 nights cruising this region and this is where we're getting up to the destinations up in Hokkaido so getting up to Hakodate to Aomori Otaru Kushiro and the great thing about doing cruises like this is you're going to see the full variety that Japan offers because believe you me the food um the, the history and the culture is very different depending on where you go to uh, uh, across Japan. The reason for that is up until around the 16th century, Japan was formed by a lot of different kingdoms. They had different kings and they were constantly fighting. And then the Edo period came in around the mid 16th century and it unified Japan. But what, what this did, it, it basically highlights all the different cuisines and the different cultures the topography is really really different of, of these destinations so by doing a cruise that's say three weeks long you're not only going to get to see more of this incredible destination but you will definitely get to see the variety that japan offers we're also going to go into places like jeju which is a south korean island pristine waters beautiful cuisine uh, an amazing destination to visit now, Princess are world-renowned for our cruise tours, probably most famously up in Alaska, where we own our own lodges, we own our own trains, and it is the ultimate experience up there. If you don't know what a cruise tour is, a cruise tour is simply a land and sea holiday, okay? So not a lot of people know that we offer cruise tours in this region. So we can combine the bullet train heading from Tokyo, or Kyoto, I should say, uh, to Tokyo, pre-cruise or post-cruise, um, heading past Mount Fuji, getting through Kyoto, uh, and also exploring Osaka. So there are a few different options. You can see there we've got um, a few different cruises which they combine with, and that is depending on when in the year you're looking to cruise. So that one in the middle, that cruise tour 3A, you can see here we're heading all the way down south to Taiwan. So we go to places like Ishigaki, Okinawa, which is one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth, pristine waters, some of the loveliest people you'll ever meet, and also the home of the oldest population on planet Earth. The average age there is something like 102. It's crazy. Beautiful food, beautiful location. We're heading down there um, when things are getting a little bit cooler up in Japan. So this is going to be around that October period where we're heading down to those Southern Isles. But regardless of when you're looking to cruise in Japan, we'll have a cruise tour available for you. Now, of course, Japan, you will need to fly to get there. Don't forget Princess Easy Air, this uh, very simple and easy way to add airfares to any reservation. 
simply make the reservation. You can actually quote this at the time of quoting a cruise. Uh, but once it's booked, um, jump into Princess Easy Air. If people want to use points towards their airfares, we can do that. But one of the great things about Princess Easy Air is the fact that if there are delays, and unfortunately we are seeing a lot of delays these days with flights, if your flight is delayed, because it's been booked through Princess Easy Air, we know about it. So if you're arriving to that ship the same day that you're departing uh, Australia or New Zealand, and if your flight's going to get you in a little bit late, you're going to be a little bit late to the ship, we know about it. Again, similar to that short excursion, we're going to wait for you. One of the great things that we also offer is the fact that if your flight gets cancelled, we have a team who will rebook that flight for you. We take all the stress out of managing the airfares for you. It's really, really great. We've got flexible fares. We've got restricted fares. Restricted fares, instant purchase, non-changeable, non-refundable. Flexible fares, once you've paid deposit on your cruise, you can literally reserve your airfares without paying for them up to 45 days prior to embarkation. And you can even change them up to 45 days with no penalty, which is an amazing offering. It really is. Quite often, some people will want to have a stopover. Maybe they want to go to Singapore beforehand. Potentially, they want to use Korean Air and they want to go to Korea, to Seoul, something like that. You can add in those stopovers in Princess Easy Air. It is a really, really simple and a very, very um, awesome offering to trade and clients. Now, speaking of sales tools, make sure you are heading to Princess One Source, which has had a bit of a re, uh, revamp recently. Uh, Princess One Source is the place to go for all of your collateral. Um, so if you're looking to do a campaign, you're sending out EDMs, all of that's in there. If you want to know um, more about which cruises are going in the specific destinations, you know, what offerings do we have for Spring Flowers? How long are the cruises? All of that information is located in one place, and that is Princess One Source. It has got absolutely everything. It is also the place where you can learn more about cruise sale weeks, future cruise deposits, your select sailings. All of it is there. That is the place to go to. Make sure you're heading to Princess One Source because I'm pretty sure the answer to a question that you have can and will be located right there. Now, I've just realized I've spoken for nearly 40 minutes on Japan. You can see how passionate I am about it. It is an amazing destination, and I strongly recommend uh, that potentially you want to go there. Remember, we've got our Princess Academy. Princess Academy, once you complete all of the modules, you can actually receive a complimentary cruise. You can cruise in Japan for free. Why not? What a way to do it. Experience the best in the region in Princess Cruises and uh, explore one of the most incredible destinations that can be found on planet Earth. Now, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to your uh, sales managers or your relevant key account manager. Thank you so much for joining me on this. And I will bid you a farewell with this video all about Japan. Thank you so much. Arigato gozaimasu.